This is Chelsea Marsh from VETT 221, task 5. And we have our patient here that we've just gotten down, and we're going to be doing a dental procedure today. So we have her intubated. We also have an IV catheter in place. We're going to go ahead and set her rate, and that's going to be 45. Okay, so we have that set up here and connected um, down to her right cephalic vessel here. Zoom back out. <laughs> um, she's a little light right now, so I'm going to show you her anesthetic. She's on. Um, this is easier. One um, liter of oxygen and one percent. We're going to turn it up to one and a half percent isoflurane, and she is breathing on her own right now. So first thing, we're going to check a heart rate here with our stethoscope and see how she's doing. Okay, so heart rate's 60, and I got that by counting for heart beats for 15 seconds, multiplying by 4 um, for a minute, um, total in 1 minute, so it's 60 beats per minute. She's still a little light, so we're going to turn her up even more here. Go up to 2. And we're going to start hooking some leads up. ECG leads here. So white goes in the right axilla, red goes in the left inguinal, and black goes in the left axilla. A little bit of alcohol on each of those to help it conduct it. And I'll turn our machine on. So up here is our machine. and turn on the ECG. Okay, so that's good. Heart rate's come up a little bit. That's how I could tell she was a little too light. Also, she was huffing. She didn't have any blink reflex um, palpebral, so she's um, kind of coming out of that um, excitement phase and going into the Stage two, plane one of the light anesthesia. So she was fighting it just a little bit still. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and attach her blood pressure cuff now. Put that on the right front leg here. And turn that on. I'm gonna set it to take a blood pressure every two minutes. Once that comes up on the machine, we'll go ahead and show you. But we have a nice ECG reading right now. Okay, so we have a nice um, ECG up there, and heart rate's reading 148. And zoom in a little closer. There we go. Okay. I'm going to zoom back out, and we're going to attach our end tidal CO2. Um, which I'm going to tell you right now is really touchy and it might not actually work, but we can explain how it would work. So we have our side stream and tidal CO2 um, little attachment here. So we're going to attach that to the patient's end of the endotracheal tube. And then it's got the little sensor there. Hopefully that will start working, so I'm going to turn that on. So if that is working, it's going to warm up, but if it was to be working, it's going to show a capnograph up here in the blue section and a number. So it's starting to show the capnograph here and a number here, so that number 17, we're hoping for that to be closer to 38, but sometimes our end tidal CO2 doesn't actually work. So it also has a respiration monitor up there, that's the 12. And back out. And we got a blood pressure there of 156 over 100 and 119 for our mean arterial pressure. So she's still, even now, a little bit light. So we're going to turn her up here. She was used, uh, we used propofol to induce her, so we're going to stay up on um, three 
for our isoflurane right now. Um, we're not going to use a temperature probe out here, we'll just use a rectal thermometer. Um, I have my stethoscope here, I also have the esophageal stethoscope if we need it, so I can um, demonstrate how that would work um, when we're down and getting into our dental procedure, so we have that as well. Um, so another thing I want to mention, she's on a bunch of these little pink warming discs underneath her fleece to keep her warm. So we have those heated up, we have three of those. And we have a little pillow under her head and fleece on top of her as well to prevent her from becoming hypothermic. So um, we're going to go ahead and write down some numbers now. Thank you. So we have our time here is 11.50. And we're going to go ahead and write down our heart rate is 147. Our temp just now was 101. We have a respiratory rate of 18. Her CRT is two seconds and she's nice and pink. The blood pressure is taking it again right now, so I'm going to wait. And tidal CO2, again, you're getting a capnograph up there, but the number um, of the end tidal CO2 is not accurate. Okay, so that should be closer to 38, up to 40, um, at the peak of exhalation. And it's just not quite reading that accurately, so I'm not going to write that one down. Um, SpO2, we're going to hook that up as well. Yeah, so we have that on a different monitor, we're going to use a tongue clamp. And that should start working in just a moment. Got that on her tongue. Right there. I'm going to zoom out wide and show you the SPO2 down there. So it's reading at 100 and it's matching 140 heart rate up on the other monitor as well. Okay. So we're refusing well and ventilating well. Okay, so I'm going to write down that um, 100 SpO2, and her isoflurane is at 2.5%, and her oxygen is at 1 liter. She's on some warmings, warming discs, and some fleece. So I'm going to go ahead and monitor about every 5 minutes, um, constant monitoring, but writing down every 5 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and start her dental procedure. Okay, so we're going to take another set of vitals here in about five minutes. Um, we have our patient's heart rate is 132. Um, temperature, we're going to get in a second. We have 35 up there for an end title. 35 up there for an end title CO2. I'm going to show you that. Now it's 34. Um, we're getting a little bit more normal capnograph now, so it's working just a little bit better, um, showing those peaks and valleys on exhale. So we have 30. Four right now for that. I'm going to show you our SpO2 down there is reading 96. So that's good. We're going to record that as well. So um, respiratory rate is 9. Our CRT is pink and 2 seconds. Um, you'll notice we flipped our patient so that our doctor could do her um, surgery on that one side first. So, um, 96, SpO2, um, and tidal CO2, 34, and we have our patient, we went ahead and turned her down just a little bit, so we have her now on uh, 2, um, two yeah, you can see it, 2% isoflurane and 1 liter of oxygen flowing. I'm going to go ahead and take a listen, just to make sure her heart sounds good. Our uh, esophageal 
one matches what we're getting up on the monitor, which is 130. Up there. So again, everything's looking really good. And we were able to turn our patient um, down. So now she's in um, more of the stage two, plane two, which is our surgical anesthesia that she needed to be for that extraction. And she's still on her warmies. And we'll take a temperature and continue on um, with our dental procedure. Okay, so again, here's our warming discs. We have three of those on her. Okay, and our thermometer is reading 99.2. So we've dropped a little bit. We're going to continue monitoring that so we don't make sure that she's not hypothermic uh, during this dental procedure. But um, we're just kind of cruising along here. Good blood pressure, um, good end tidal CO2, and um, pretty good um, SpO2 down there. Again, um, that's up at 96. Um, so we're ventilating, we're perfusing, and we're staying hydrated with our fluids. So we'll come back another five minutes. Okay, so we're back filming again, and we're doing our doing our dental procedure here. Uh, I'm going to show you up there. All of our monitors are still working correctly. So zoom in. So we have a heart rate of 122. Um, our respiratory rate is 25. Oops, I'm sorry, six. It's a blue number, so that's six or eight. We're getting a little bit better graph, so we have 44 for our end tidal CO2. Um, our patient is, um, we turned her down just a little bit. I'm going to show you here. So her ISO level is down at 1.5% and her oxygen is still at 1 liter. And she's cruising right along. I'll show you the blood pressure up here. So 105 over 53, and 70 is our main arterial pressure. We want to keep that above 60 to make sure our organs are getting perfused. We'll check the capillary refill time. On camera. We're going to check the CRT here, which looks like about two seconds, and she's nice and bright and pink and hydrated. Okay. And our SPO2 monitor down there is reading 92. Matching up with our heart rate, which is 120, and matches up there on the other monitor. Okay, so we have 98 for our SpO2. We are on 1.5% isofluorine and one liter of oxygen. And it looks like we're cruising right along. Just gonna keep monitoring here. Well, we finish our dental. I'm gonna check her heart, make sure she sounds good. sound good nice and clear so we're going to bag her one good breath here about every five minutes we've been doing that to make sure that she's not having any atelectasis of that lung that's um, on the downside but we are flipping her quite regularly to do the dental and the surgery so she hasn't been on one side very long we're just going to continue our monitoring here
Okay, so he's told us that he's finished with his dental cleaning. So we're going to go ahead and turn her down. Um, to a half percent there, I'll show you. So we turn her down um, there to a half a percent of isoflurane. Still on one liter of oxygen. And we're going to go ahead and start the wake-up process. Um, you can see that she's breathing nice and regularly. That bag is moving pretty good. Again, we're giving her a good breath about every five minutes. Real deep, clear out all of that. CO2 might be in her lungs. Okay. I'm going to take one last set of vitals here. So 125 is our heart rate. Take a temperature as well for our post-op temperature. We don't have any reflexes yet, we're not blinking, we don't have the ear for it. no fetal. Not swallowing, but that should start to happen here in a second. Okay, so we have 98.7 for our temperature. Okay, so I broke my chair. 98.7 for our final temperature. Our respiratory rate is 7. Um, our CRT is still pink, less than 2 seconds. Our final blood pressure 106 over 57. 73 is our mean arterial pressure, so that stayed above 60 the whole time, so that's great. And tidal CO2 is at 34, which is perfect. We are on a half a percent of isoflurane and one liter of oxygen. Still on our wormies and our fleece here. And our SpO2 is reading at 98. You can see that down there, and the heart rates also match that monitor up there. So we're going to go ahead and turn the patient off and begin waking up. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to show you that. So we're turning our patient off of the isoflurane. We're going to remain on the oxygen for a moment here. Um, we're starting to wake up. You can see the respiratory rate increasing here. Okay. Heart rate's increasing. Still no, maybe a little bit of palpebral. No tongue yet. So we're going to start taking off the monitors. One at a time here. Take the blood pressure cuff off. Okay. Still nice and pink. Doing a good job perfusing. Still not getting any reflux yet. We might have a little fetal there, so she's pulling back on me. She's a brachycephalic breed, so we're not going to excavate her very quickly we're going to make sure she's coughing that tube out before we um, take that out. So we're keeping her warm, keeping her under her fleeces. I'm going to put this back on the sand here. And we're going to keep monitoring her during her wake up. So I'm going to take her, disconnect her from the oxygen source here so she's breathing room here. We're going to start turning off our monitors up here. Otherwise they're going to alarm and tell us that she's having trouble. We go ahead and deflate her cuff. Bring our cuff syringe so that we don't injure her trachea when we extubate. So she's starting to breathe a little heavier. We're going to untie that tie behind her ears. We'll take our heart monitor off. So we got up to 160 beats per minute there. 
tell she's starting to wake up. So again, the ECG leads, when wiping those off with a little bit of alcohol in, um, they got a little bloody during her dental procedure. You can wipe the entire length of those. No washing her, making sure she's feeling good. And then you also wipe off the entire length of the tubing for the blood pressure cuff and disconnect. Put that up on the shelf for the next time we're going to use it. I'm going to show you, we've turned off our monitor, or our monitors and our machine here, so we're um, off with the oxygen and off with the isofluorine. So you can hear her starting to kind of wake up here. I'm going to turn her sternally so that she has any liquid back in the back of her mouth. She doesn't aspirate that. Turn off the last bit of the monitor here. Finish with that. She's starting to lift her head. Got a little bit of palpebral response. We don't have swallow yet, so we're not going to extubate just yet. Okay. So we're just about ready here. Turn off our SPO2 monitor. Tongue probe, tongue clamp here. We want to keep that clean as well. Wipe that down with a little bit of oxygen or uh, alcohol here. Okay. Okay. She is just about ready. She's sitting up. Respiratory rate's increased. We have the blink response. Her eyes have started to roll back central. A little bit of swallow there. And double checking that her cup was deflated. Don't ever want to take that out without doing that. Okay. Okay. Pretty close here. Okay, I have one swallow. We wait till they swallow a couple times. Up. Okay, and there's a second swallow. Pull that tube in one fell swoop. Good girl. Let's sit her up sternal one more time. We're going to go ahead and take right down our last um, numbers here. So we turned off our oxygen and gas here at about 12.09. So right off there and room O2 for what she was breathing. Um, she's on her warmies still. You can hear her vocalizing, so she's waking up. Uh, we didn't have any of the other monitors on except for the one, about 160 heart rate that we had. And we already took her post-op temp, so that is finished. We're just right at our extubation time, which is 12.36. And the anesthesia stop time, stop time, which is 12.09. And that is our completed anesthetic record. And here is our patient, nice and awake, not real alert yet, but um, nice and awake. We're going to go ahead and clean her up, um, and she is all ready to go. Back to her kennel, and um, that went really well.